Becoming rich is like a game, and in order to succeed, you must know the rules. In fact, the better you understand and use the rules in your favor, the faster you will become ridiculously wealthy. Therefore, in this video, I will share with you the 7 rules of money. And if you're new to the channel, then hit the subscribe button below for more life-changing content. Let me share with you the story of my friend Jeff, and how he came to not only learn the 7 rules of money, but how he was able to use these rules to quit his 9-to-5 job and fulfill his dreams of becoming a world traveler. Meet Jeff. Jeff is a 38-year-old data entry clerk at a mid-sized IT company in Chicago. Or, at least he was until a few weeks ago when he gave in his letter of resignation. Rewind 10 years and Jeff was punching the clock at this IT company day in and day out. Every morning, he would dread having to go into work and counted down the days until he could retire. Sadly, Jeff wasn't the best with his money, so being able to retire at any age seems like a stretch. One day, Jeff went into work and was introduced to a new colleague named Steve. Steve was hired on as a consultant computer engineer for the company. Steve was a white-haired, 50-something-year-old man who seemed to always be walking around with a smile on his face. At lunch that day, Jeff walked by Steve who was sitting alone in the lunchroom. He continued to wonder why the man looked so happy, but left him to eat alone. Every single day that week, Jeff watched as Steve ate his lunch with a huge grin on his face. Finally, he decided to ask Steve what he was so happy about. Jeff sat down and reintroduced himself to Steve and mentioned that he was perplexed as to why he was constantly smiling. Steve chuckled and said that there was a lot to be happy about. Jeff didn't like this simple answer and wanted him to elaborate, so he began to share with Steve how hard it is for him to drag himself into work every day and how boring his job as a data entry clerk can be. Then, Steve began to open up and explain to Jeff that being a computer engineer is his second career that he learned after he retired many years ago. Jeff sat there perplexed, wondering how Steve could have been retired already and have gone back to school to learn computer engineering, so he asked Steve to explain his story. Steve told Jeff that he retired at age 40, took a few years to travel, then completed his degree in computer science. Steve could tell that Jeff was impressed with his story, but he admitted that he was just like Jeff when he was younger. He told Jeff that he used to work as a stockbroker in New York City, and while he made good money, he too hated going into his job at work. Jeff was eagerly listening to Steve's story and asked just how Steve was able to retire so young. Steve then said the phrase that would change Jeff's life forever. I learned the seven rules of money. Steve said that normally he didn't share this information with anyone, but since Jeff was the only person to come sit with him at lunch the entire week, that he would be happy to impart this wisdom on him. Jeff accepted, and Steve began with rule number one. Rule number one, pay yourself first. Steve explained that many people intend to save, but simply never get around to it. In fact, one in six respondents to a 2017 survey said they simply hadn't had the time to set up a savings plan. Steve said that even if you have the best intentions, unexpected expenses arise, and without knowing how much you want to save, you will never know how much you can spend. Steve explained that more than 60% of Americans don't employ any form of budgeting which hamstrings their ability to save. This lack of financial oversight combined with low wages is the reason that more than three quarters of all workers in the US live paycheck to paycheck, leaving little chance for savings. Steve admitted that he too was once one of these lackluster savers until he learned a few simple tricks. The first was the 20-30-50 method. The 20-30-50 method works as follows. Every month, you divide your income into the following way. 50% is designated to living expenses like rent, utilities, and groceries. The next 30% goes towards entertainment costs like going out to eat or seeing a movie. The final 20% is meant to go right into your savings account. Steve explained that allocating part of his income before the month started helped him get an idea of how much he could save, but some months, he would dip into that amount and end up saving less than he intended. Then, he learned the second trick, which was to set up automated deductions. Steve explained to Jeff that automated deductions work in the following way. Every two weeks, part of your paycheck is sent directly into a savings account instead of the full amount going right into a checking account. Jeff explained that routing money into an account that you can access ensures you don't spend the money allocated to savings, and this helps Steve save hundreds of thousands of dollars over the course of his time as a stockbroker. Rule number two, saving will never make you rich. While Steve appeared to be a big proponent of saving money, he then admitted to Jeff that saving money is not enough to become rich. Steve explained that the problem with saving money is that it doesn't grow. The typical savings account only pays 0.09% interest. That means that even if you have $100,000 in your savings account, you would get back only $90 in return in one year's time, 
And after you net that return against inflation of 2%, you would actually have lost money. Steve then stressed the importance of investing. He explained that he was lucky to learn just how powerful compound interest was at an early age. And from age 18 to 40, when he retired, he invested $250 a week every single week. During that 22-year span, he received an average return of 10%, which at age 40 left him with over $1 million, of which $750,000 was compound interest that he had earned. In fact, it is the same lump sum of money that Steve continues to live off many years later, but this is only possible because of his wise spending ways. Rule number three, you must live below your means. Steve explained that this rule may seem obvious, but still millions of people have a hard time following this rule. You see, we live in a materialistic world where many people are more worried about getting a new iPhone than saving for retirement, and these types of short-sighted decisions often have people spending much more than they earn. The truth is that if you ever want to achieve financial freedom, then you must spend less than you earn and put away the difference. By putting away this money, you give yourself so many advantages that having money in the bank provides. Firstly, having a lump sum of money set aside can give you the peace of mind that you can weather any financial challenge that comes your way. Moreover, you can use that money to start a business, which could double or triple your income once your company becomes profitable. Better yet, if you invest that money wisely and build up enough of a financial nest egg, you can give in your two weeks notice at work and retire early just like Steve did. Rule number four, you must have emergency funds. Steve explained that one of the least exciting but more important aspects of your financial health is having an emergency fund set up. Steve stressed to Jeff that if he did not have a cash emergency fund set up, that he must make the establishment of one a top priority. While Steve had just explained how leaving money in a savings account wasn't the best way to grow your money, he said that it is perfectly acceptable to keep money on hand in a checkings or savings account. Steve could tell that Jeff wasn't super excited by this money roll, so he decided to stress the importance of an emergency fund. Steve explained that 20 years ago, his wife got very sick and had to be hospitalized for three months. Steve didn't know if she'd be able to recover from her illness, so he took off time from work to spend every single day with her in the hospital. He said that luckily she pulled through and made a full recovery, but being able to rely on an emergency fund was critical in her time of need. Therefore, Steve urged Jeff to put a year's worth of living expenses aside in case he had his own personal emergency to attend to. Rule number five, use debt wisely. Steve went on to explain that one of the keys to becoming rich is to avoid making bankers and credit card lenders rich. Some purchases like buying a home or paying for a college education are difficult to make if you don't go into debt. But both student loans and mortgage debts are generally classified as good debt because buying a home and getting an education can ultimately increase your net worth. Other assets, Steve explained, don't go up in value. So if you're borrowing to buy them, you take a double hit, interest plus depreciation. Steve explained that while he loved fancy cars, a car is one of the worst depreciating assets that you can go into debt for, as it loses value very quickly, and interest can be very costly. Steve explained that as a rule of thumb, when buying any depreciating asset, including your vehicle, make it your goal to pay cash, and if you can't afford to buy it in cash, then either wait until you can, or buy a cheaper car. Rule number six, the more you learn, the more you earn. Steve explained that his mantra in life is, the more you learn, the more you earn, which is why he actively works on expanding his knowledge every single day. Steve admitted that he wasn't always a voracious learner, but as a computer engineer became a huge fan of Bill Gates during the early years of Microsoft, and came to learn that Bill Gates takes reading vacations just to catch up on books he wants to finish. Moreover, another one of his idols, Warren Buffett, reads for numerous hours a day. At an early age, Steve figured that reading needed to be a part of his daily routine, as it allowed him to learn new ideas, concepts, and open his mind to new possibilities. Jeff wasn't much of a reader, but asked Steve what exactly he should be reading to help him grow his wealth. Steve explained that nonfiction books on social skills, business development, economics, and any other self-development related areas are great places to start. Even staying current on world news can help you make more informed decisions in your day-to-day -day life. Rule number seven, money won't make you happy. After going through the previous six money rules, Jeff exclaimed that he couldn't wait to use these rules to become rich and buy all the things he always dreamt of having. Steve laughed as he knew the truth about money that Jeff had yet to realize. Steve explained to Jeff that money can only buy happiness when it's spent correctly. Steve wanted to drive home this point by first explaining when spending money doesn't make you any happier. Many times, people buy stuff because they think it will make them happy. They just have to have the latest phone or outfit. And yes, spending money is fun and makes us happy. But for how long? 
More often than not, the novelty of the new item you purchase wears off in a day or two and you are right back to where you started. So then you have to buy more to achieve that spending high and the cycle continues. The cycle is what keeps the majority of people broke and getting caught in this behavior doesn't bring true happiness to their life. So instead, Steve explained you're much better off spending your money on things that will give you longer lasting happiness. For instance, buy your parents their dream car. Then every time you see them driving it, you will be happy that you were able to help them realize a lifelong dream of theirs. Alternatively, spend money on traveling like I did, Steve exclaimed. Seeing different parts of the world will make you appreciate what you have and will create memories that you can cherish for a lifetime. Therefore, money can buy you happiness, but only when spent correctly. Jeff walked away from that lunch table a changed man. From that point forward, he promised himself that he would use the seven rules of money to become financially independent and quit his job to fulfill his dream of traveling the world. While it didn't happen overnight, a decade later, on a sunny Tuesday morning, Jeff walked into his boss's office, pulled out an envelope, and handed in his two-week notice, or what he called his ticket to freedom. Thanks for watching. If you want to go from the life you have to the life you deserve, then hit the subscribe button below.